Okay, welcome everybody. My name is Dana Thompson and I am one of the Alzheimer's educators at the Alzheimer's Resource Service with IU Health. And today we're doing the first of one of our um, virtual mini caregiver university sessions. So normally these are sessions that we would present um, through public libraries and other places that we partner with. Um, but given our current circumstances, we're gonna see how we do taking these things um, live to the internet. Um, for those of you who aren't able to join us at our live times, we will do our best to keep these updated on our website as well, which is alzresourceindiana.org. So you can always find them there after we're done. We thought we would start this series off with some tips on coping with our current situation. Uh, it's hard to be a care partner. There are a lot of challenges and changes that come with that already, um, but adding this current situation with COVID-19 on that has provided some unique challenges that we haven't seen a lot in the past. So we wanted to give you some tips and resources for dealing with those challenges. And we'd love to hear from you afterward if you have found some things that have been helpful to you as well. So, what we would like to talk about is addressing some of the common challenges that have come along with this situation. Of utmost concern for us at the Alzheimer's Resource Service has been the challenge of isolation and engaging people living with dementia during this time of isolation. The words social distancing have been thrown around a lot, but we would encourage people to think of it more as physical distancing while keeping that social component there. Um, there also can sometimes be the challenge of poor understanding of the situation. Depending on where people are in the process of their diagnosis, there may be some difficulty understanding or remembering some of the reasons why this isolation is in effect and that there have been changes in the routines that people are used to. We'll also talk a little bit about managing those ADLs and IADLs and hygiene. So these are those everyday things that people are engaged in from self-care to finding the provisions that they need. Um, and we'll also talk a little bit about some of the things in the community that can help meet those. All right, so back to that problem of isolation that we had discussed earlier. Um, it, this is something that has come up for us, not only for that person living with dementia, but also for their family members. Um, this stay in place order that we are under here in Indiana has provided some real challenges with seeking and finding the support and the engagement that we're used to. This is true whether people are living at home or whether they're living in a facility. Some of the interventions that we have found to be somewhat helpful during this time are FaceTime or other interactive um, web-based platforms like WebEx and Zoom. Um, even for folks living with dementia who might not understand what it is that they're seeing on that FaceTime app, um, it can be helpful for family members who may need to reach out to others for support or who may just need to lay eyes on their loved ones who are in a facility. Similar to that, videos and voice recordings can be helpful, particularly for those who are living separately of their loved one. Um, having that reassuring voice or message that that person can go back to over and over and over um, can be helpful in this time and can cut down on the number of times that family have to explain why we're doing the things that we're doing. Um, phone calls, of course, are also a mode of technology that most people are familiar with and can engage with if they have some support to do that. For those who have a loved one living in a facility, I'm sure many of you have seen on social media family members doing window visits. Um, these can be accompanied by a phone call so that you can speak to your loved one as they're able to see you, hopefully giving them that visual encouragement to engage and cueing their brains to 
this voice is that they're hearing. Um, it can also be accompanied by signs, pet, um, messages in, on the sidewalk in chalk, <laughs> flowers that you've planted, bird feeders, anything else that you think will help them to connect and engage with you. Um, we've also seen a lot of family members who are writing letters or people in the community that are writing letters to folks who might uh, need a little further engagement. Uh, not only is it nice to receive that handwritten piece of mail that you can go back to over and over and receive the friendly message, but for those who can, returning a letter and talking about their experience can also be therapeutic and engaging as well. For staff who work in facilities where social distancing can be very difficult, um, we encourage you to think about how to do this in a way that is um, supportive of your residents. We know that it's really hard when you're dealing with this kind of a condition to help people who don't understand the situation to isolate appropriately. So rather than keeping people secluded to their rooms, um, think about perhaps rearranging furniture in the facility so that that six foot social distancing is something that is easy to adhere to without even thinking about it. Um, perhaps consider parallel play. So people who are far apart from one another in those um, chairs or furniture that you've spread out or even in the doorways of their room can do one activity at, a sa at the same time so that they can engage without needing to be within arm's length of each other. So some ideas for that parallel activity might be playing or listening to music, doing some storytelling, uh, playing games where there doesn't need to be physical interaction or other uh, activities like this. I've seen some very creative ideas out there, including facilities who have brought building materials to each of their residents and asked them to build a sculpture out of those things and then took those sculptures on a road show through the facility um, and had people vote on which were the most inventive, the most creative, the most beautiful, et cetera. Um, so keeping them connected with one another, even when they can't be physically close to that person. Um, we know that our brain likes visual input the best. Um, so we encourage you to think about how you can vi visually engage residents as well. And we'll talk about some of these resources a little bit later in this slideshow, but thinking about how photos videos, um, and objects can be used to help with visual engagement. You might also consider something in a written format, such as a resident newsletter, where each resident submits a piece, and this can be passed out to other residents who can then learn about and share with others what's going on with them in a, in a format um, that they can go back to over and over. In addition to the challenges that people living with dementia may have with isolation, um, there also might be poor understanding of the situation at hand. Um, if this is the case for your loved one or resident, I would encourage you to avoid complex explanation. Although this is a complex situation and there are lots of rules and regulations to remember, those long explanations are not necessary in all situations. So reminding people that there is a virus and they're at high risk so that they're, you are doing everything you can to help keep them and you safe. Keep it simple as you explain. Um, help, help your loved one also if they're having trouble expressing their feelings around this or are feeling frustrated scared, anxious, or depressed. Um, rather than just encouraging them to hang in there or brushing off those feelings, allow them the time and opportunity to express those things and, and reassure them that it's normal to be feeling this way and that you'll be there with them, if not physically, emotionally, until we're all through this together. If necessary, apologize. I'm sorry that I can't be there with you. 
I'm sorry that you're frustrated about this situation. I'm sorry that I made you feel that way. It wasn't my intention. I'm sorry can be really magical words for people who are feeling angry or defensive about something that they don't fully understand. Above all, throughout this situation, avoid arguing. Someone living with dementia is doing the best that they can to make sense of their situation, um, but it's very difficult for us to reason with somebody whose logical reasoning system might be changing. So don't argue. Stick to those first four points um, and focus on helping make that relationship work. It's important at this time, as I'm sure you're well aware, that we are all focusing on hygiene and maintaining routine. Keeping that routine as normal as possible while still adhering to those guidelines is going to be key for people living with dementia. Providing routine will help people to feel like they are safe and that they understand the order of their day as much as is possible. So wake up at the same time. Make sure that you're getting a shower and taking care of those other things for yourself as well as the person that you're caring for. Um, if you have been exposed or you're sick, wear a mask. Um, sometimes this can be frightening for people living with dementia if they don't understand why we're wearing those masks. So if it helps, provide a mask for that person also um, and, and explain as simply as you can that you're not feeling so well, and you want to keep them from getting sick if possible. Um, for those of you working in facilities, it might also be helpful to think about whether there are medically necessary exceptions to the no visitors rule. One exception that I have seen come up for a few family members has been for those families whose loved one has difficulty or refuses to eat unless that family member is there. Because they could um, not thrive if their family member is there making sure that they eat, I have seen facilities deem these visits medically necessary and put guidelines in place to make sure that that risk of infection spread is very, very low. For those living with dementia, hand washing can really be a pleasant thing. I know that we're really focusing on this a lot now, uh, getting this done. Um, but I also know that family members don't want to feel like they're constantly giving rules and making directives. So make this a fun activity. Model it as you do it. Host a sing-along to make sure that people are washing their hands long enough. Pick a favorite song if you need to. Um, or Think about other methods for keeping hands clean. For instance, putting a crock pot with soap and water in a kitchen and rolling up hand towels in that crock pot. Periodically pull one out and offer that hand spa to uh, your loved one and do it with them. That warmth and um, if the scent is pleasant can really make this feel like a pleasurable thing rather than another task that you have to take care of during the day. In terms of those IADLs, those things that maybe are not primary hygiene issues, but really are important to our daily lives, like going out to, getting, to get food and other necessary objects, um, there are lots of services in our area that, that can help with these things. There are a lot of restaurants and stores that are using curbside delivery and even volunteer services. Um, that can be taken advantage of. If you are in the Monroe or Owen County area, Area 10 has set up a volunteer service for delivering groceries and prescriptions for anybody that would need that. And you do not have to be a currently active Area 10 um, participant to take advantage of that. Um, another rule might be to leave items that you have purchased or ordered outside where they were dropped off for at least 24 hours if they are cardboard or fabric and to wipe down with disinfectant wipes anything that's plastic or metal before you bring it into work. Finally, I would encourage you to think about what really has to be done. 
consider whether something is really necessary before you go out to do those things. Um, these are some of the resources for support, including that Area 10 link that I told you about. Um, there's lots of places doing delivery, pickup, um, and those types of things in our area. Um, the next few pages here are just some websites for um, engagement resources. So everything on here from museum tours puppet theaters um, and Disney rides to classes, national park tours and coloring pages. Um, there's classic streaming sports. Um, and one that I would like to point out specifically on here is at the very top of this page. Um, Dementia Mentors is an organization run through the Dementia Action Alliance. And it is entirely organized and run by people living with dementia in order to connect with other people living with dementia. So through DementiaMentors.org, people living with dementia can watch videos about life with dementia and can also participate in virtual memory cafes, which are memory chats, uh, I mean, which are video chats um, for people with some type of memory loss or dementia. Um, this kind of connection and engagement can be really, really helpful in coping with symptoms during this time and all times for people living with dementia. Uh, finally, I wanna leave you with this. Um, as we are managing the extra stress and um, tasks that are put on us due to the stay in place order of COVID-19, um, we need to make sure that we are caring for ourselves first. I like to use the analogy of when the plane is going down, you put on your own oxygen mask before you put on that of the person that you're helping. So make sure that every day you're getting some kind of physical activity, that you're taking care of your body by eating well and avoiding excess alcohol. I would encourage you to have a safe haven. So whether this is the bathroom <laughs> when you've locked it up or um, a corner of your own bedroom, have a place where you can go even for two or three minutes to really have your own space, take a deep breath, recoup before you step back into that task that you are working on. Watch your breathing. As our stress rises, our cortisol levels rise, we need to make sure that we're breathing well enough that we bring that stress level in our brain back down so that we can think as clearly as we need to. So if you need to, take three large deep breaths in and out before moving on with your next task. If the weather's nice enough, get outside. Listen to the birds. Feel the sunshine. Move your body in a way that connects you with something other than the task at hand. Um, reach out to others however you can, by the phone, by letters, um, by window visits, <laughs> however you can to connect with other people who understand what you're going through and can listen. And build calming activities into your day for everyone, whether it's using some of the activities on the links that I provided before, or whether it's listening to music, or whether it's having nap time every day, make sure that something is built in so that you're proactively managing the stress that this is adding to your daily life. We would love to hear from you. If you have questions, comments, or other ideas, you can email us or call us. Our information is at the bottom of this slide. We are going to post this PowerPoint and presentation on our website. Um, so please go there to explore the links that we've shared with you or to get in touch with us. Thanks for joining us today, and please let us know if we can help support you. We look forward to seeing you next.